What is going on everyone, it is Axel Beats here for Anime Uproar, and recently we covered the 20 best Nen abilities of Hunter x Hunter. And since you guys seem to like that one so much, today we're going to be twisting that one a little bit and discussing which characters in the series best use their Nen abilities. Now again, just like last video, this doesn't particularly mean that the number one character will not necessarily be the strongest, but at the same time, being strong doesn't really hurt the score either. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Hunter x Hunter content on the channel, remember to leave a like as well as a comment down below. It only takes a second, but it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you just haven't subscribed to Anime Uproar yet, what are you doing? Make this the video that you subscribe, and be sure to click that bell to select all notifications. You can also follow Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. Of course, this video will contain spoilers, so please proceed with caution, you have been warned. Unlike last time, I will obviously be allowing more than one ability per character as we're trying to look at things in a more holistic view. And just like last time, characters you might want to see here, but definitely will not, include Gon and Killua. Again, Gon's typical use of his Nen through Junken is just, you know, kinda lame and not impressive. Like, sure, it can quite literally pack a punch, but that's kind of it. And yeah, he has his transformation, but to me that's just not practical enough to count. That said, it is definitely more highly ranked on this list than the last one as it served the purpose of defeating an enemy who was drastically stronger than him. However, putting Gon in a coma and taking his ability to use Nen away in the future, just a little bit too drastic of a cost for me. Meanwhile, Killua's Godspeed gives him a ton of speed and helps him react by dodging and attacking automatically. The downside is that it totally drains Killua very quickly, but again, as a last resort, this move could be great until it leaves him wide open. If you need to escape, or if he needs to deal with a strong enemy, this is a phenomenal option. But things that put the user out after being used probably won't make it onto the list, as I just don't think that's an efficient use of Nen. So I'm hoping that these examples each help you show how this list is going to work, if a Nen user can make use of their ability, even if it isn't great on its own, if it accomplishes a goal, and has a good sense of usability to it, without costing too much, then it'll get a lot of points. With that said though, let's get into the actual list. So the first ones were a little bit of a hard choice for me, and it might surprise you since I am putting them above Gon and Killua, Especially since they're kind of similar restrictions in play, at least in terms of when the abilities can be used. But for number 20 and 19, we have the choice between Razor and Komugi. Razor was the final boss of Greed Island, who uses his 14 devils to play dodgeball, while Komugi's rapidly evolving Gungi Nen skill, well, rapidly evolves her Gungi skills. While these can be seen as extremely specific skills, which you could argue is like Gon's transformation, there is no drastic shortcoming, and on top of that, they are perfectly fitting to the user's lifestyles. Komugi lives to play Gungi, and it was her skill in that game that kept her alive with Meruem. At one point, she even says that if she lost, her life would be worthless. On the other hand, Razor is the de facto guardian of Greed Island, and more specifically, he's the gatekeeper for the treasure and its completion. Players need to pass through him to finish the game. For those who don't know, Razor prior to being on Greed Island was a murderer on death row, and it was Jing choosing to hire him and develop his game that saved him and gave him a new path. And as such, using his ability to help guard the ending of the game rather than using it for violence like he might have when he was younger, shows how he has reformed and is perfectly fitting for someone who works in a game. So for me, I think number 20 would go to Komugi, while 19 goes to Razor. Just because of how Razor's, I think, has a bit more meaning and character behind it, in my opinion. In 18th place, we have what I believe is the only person to share a spot on both lists, which is Machi. Machi's Nen allows her to make threads, which in itself is fine. But Machi uses them for healing through stitching wounds, and even reattaching limbs and offensively to bind and control her opponents. The ingenuity to use something as simple as making threads in such versatile and useful ways is monumentally impressive, especially when both methods of use are very useful for the Phantom Troop, allowing her to heal her allies to some extent, or to catch their targets. If Krollo is the head of the spider, then Machi is its webs. At 17, we have Castro. 
While this guy might not have had the most relevant role in the story as a whole, his use of Nen was perfect for his position. The upper floors of Heaven's Arena are filled with fighters using their Nen for advantage. And even without use of his Nen, Castro is able to outdo just about all of them with the exception of Hisoka, whom he's just slightly weaker than when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Wing even states that if Castro had developed his Tiger Bite Fist, he could have been one of the strongest Nen users alive. However, Castro instead focused on his double ability, which made a clone of himself. Having two of himself makes him a deadly opponent, and it's only with the use of severe mind games that Hisoka was able to take him out, even despite losing an arm in the process. However, for using an ability which was perfect for holding the title in Heaven's Arena, he definitely gets the spot. Number 16 is someone who didn't make it at all last time, but I think just makes the cut this time. And it's not just because she's a waifu. Shizuku, or as you might know her vacuum girl in the Phantom Troop, is able to summon a vacuum named Blinky that can suck up any non-living or non-nen substances. This includes poisons or gases from the bodies of living people, if you're trying to save a teammate, but more importantly, this is one of the greatest tools she has, specifically because of how it helps the troop. Her vacuum is able to suck up the crime scenes after they destroy a room full of people, leaving no traces of the actions behind, truly turning this troop into something that feels like a phantom. More than anything, this is just an effective tool to help the phantom troop in general, which is kind of all she has, so it's a very good tool for her character. 15th place is another character who didn't make it last time, but I think again just makes the cut. Pito has a slew of abilities revolving around her giant summoned spirit, Dr. Blythe. While many of the core abilities are not exactly useful on the battlefield, they still do assist her in her role of being one of Meruem's royal guards. At the end of the day, if she can find a way to use her Nen in a fashion which supports Meruem, that's good enough. The major way that she uses this is similar to Machi's threads, except on top of the general control of a person's body, it also allows her to use that person's speech and even their Nen, which, you know, if you're trying to conquer a neighboring nation's castle, then want to control their king and give orders to the nation, is pretty useful. Beyond this, Blythe can also be used to heal wounds, such as it did for Komugi, but it cannot bring the dead back to life. It can also be used on herself to give her a massive attack and speed boost. Pito used her Nen to further Meruem's ambitions, keep the most important person in the world to him alive, and to make her more effective as a guard when it came to combat. All of this adds up to a very easy addition onto this list. 14 is what is said to be the ultimate 1v1 ability with Hulkenberg's Possession Arrow, but Hulkenberg uses his subordinate's aura to create both armor and an arrow. The arrow is possessed by his subordinate spirit and flies at an incredible speed that is nearly impossible to dodge. And on top of this, it can pierce any armor or nen ability. This is more than just a big offensive and defensive boon though, because more importantly for the purpose of this video, it's that he uses his subordinates to fuel this ability. It's an ability that only people in positions of power like himself would be able to make effective use of, and for as long as he's able to keep a supply of subordinates, he is basically unstoppable when it comes to one-on-one -on -one combat, which is pretty damn effective. Thirteenth goes to Bonolenov. What makes Bonolenov's use of Nen so impressive is that it takes full advantage of his body. While normally having a body full of holes might be less than ideal, Bonolenov's battle cantabile takes full advantage of those holes. Wind blowing through them as he moves or dances produces several different effects. His go-to is creating some warrior garb and a spear, which he of course is very well trained in, but he can also summon a miniature Jupiter to crush whoever hears it. And honestly, I can't really think of making better use of the holes in his body than summoning a planet to crush his opponents. Number 12 goes to Benjamin. His Benjamin baton allows him to inherit the Nen abilities of his private army when the original user dies. While this ability seems like it has unlimited potential, there are also requirements of needing to wait until the army member actually dies, so in reality it can be a bit slow. I actually had a bit of trouble deciding where to put this one as it's pretty similar to Halkenberg's skill of using his subordinates, however the permanent effects of gaining those abilities 
just outweighs the temporary effect of armor and arrows, even if he does have to wait until his subordinates actually pass away. What I like about this specifically for Benjamin is that he was the first prince of his nation, and he's making the most of his people. While there is some ethical questions in allowing his subordinates to die for his own power, the idea of creating a lineage of abilities is just pretty fitting for a possible would-be emperor. Number 11 might seem a little bit strange given how strong our last entry was, but this is another Phantom Troop member who is, well, famously weak. And that's where his Nen ability comes in. Shalnark, rather than fighting for himself, is able to place antenna on other people to gain complete control over them. This allows him to make up for his own lack of strength while also having the potential to remove enemy threats. He can also put antenna on himself if he's in a pinch, which allows him to go on autopilot, essentially turning him into a Super Saiyan for a short time. What I love about this is that Shalnark is able to make the best of his ability to shore up his own weaknesses, and more importantly, this allows him to be a very valuable member to the Phantom Troop. In 10th place, we have Nov. Nov's Hide and Seek is one of the most subtle abilities in the series, but the way Nov makes use of it is perfection. Hide and Seek allows Nov to create a pocket dimension with multiple areas to store either people or object, which just in itself is very useful. Add in the ability to create multiple doors to each area in the real world, and you basically have a series of secret tunnels. While this ability in itself is very good, Nov's understanding of where and when to use it are what make it very powerful. He makes full use of this simple ability, which even became the linchpin behind the Chimera Ant Invasion arc, and it just demonstrates how talented he really is with it. Our number 9 is Biscuit. Biscuit's Magical Spa Service is easily one of the best support abilities in the series, and that is perfect for her. Biscuit's role is often depicted as a mentor, and as such, she uses her Nen in a way which facilitates the growth and development of her students. By summoning Cookie, she can revitalize her students and heal minor illnesses and diseases, while also making it so that they effectively don't really need to sleep very much and can continue to train for much, much longer periods. With Biscuit on your side, you can turn a week's worth of progress into a month or more just based on the extra time you have available, and that doesn't even take into account her healing your muscles or injuries, which all supplements that as well. Also, while not super impactful in most cases, she can also make herself feel young and cute, despite being, well, not those things. But either way, it is great for her own personal morale. So coming in at number 8 is one that people might want a little bit higher, but I think he belongs here. Prolo, the leader of the Phantom Troop, is effectively useless on his own. But by stockpiling abilities into his book with Bandit Secret, he gives himself a slew of powers and options. This ability is not simple to use, and the restrictions are crazy when compared to something like Meruem or Benjamin's abilities. But the way which Krolo actually uses this ability despite these flaws speaks volumes, and yes, that was a book pun. It gets to the point where Krolo can even use multiple Nen abilities at once, and even overpowered and killed Hisoka, which is definitely worth something. It isn't enough just to have all of the abilities, you need to be able to make the most of those abilities, and Krolo definitely does that. Number 7 is Yupi, who is a mass of anger and power, and for much of his role in the story, he can't really control either. However, he eventually gains his Rage Incarnate ability, which gives him full control. There isn't really much to be said about this other than saying that Yupi is devastatingly strong, and has learned to master and harness that strength. While this might seem very high for just a brute force user, there's something to be said about the need for brute force in the existence of some characters, and Yupi is one who makes that work, as he's a royal guard. With that said, I would probably never put him any higher on this list, because it doesn't really extend beyond that strength. The only real reason Yupi even makes it this high is because it isn't just the insanely powerful abilities he has, but because he's learned to work with that despite it appearing uncontrollable. It's kind of like saying that yes, a nuke is very powerful, but being able to aim it is probably more important than the power itself. In 6th place, we have the Chimera Ant Royal Guard Shiapoof. Beelzebub on its own is a very useful and versatile ability, allowing Poof to break apart into as many mini-poofs as he'd like. 
However, if the segments do get smaller than a fly, then he's no longer able to see through them. These are all still controlled in very much a hive mind by Poof, and if they're destroyed by physical force, he can just reform them. On top of that more or less scouting ability, he can also add in his butterfly scales, which allows him to read the person's emotions or physical state. This, of course, adds to the information he can attain. He doesn't end his abilities there, though, as he can manipulate his own body to look like someone else, or even awaken other people's Nen abilities. He can literally create and sustain an army for Meruem while acting as a scout, all of which makes him invaluable as a guard. Our top 5 starts off with Illumi. While his abilities do revolve around needles, which, gross, they have a ton of different applications that Illumi makes the best use of. For example, disguising himself as Gitteracker, hypnotizing people, brainwashing Killua to keep him out of danger and in line, and even using corpses as his own army. Illumi takes the base idea of needles manipulating the things that they pierce, and stretches it to the absolute limits with creativity, and this allows him to be an extremely powerful threat despite not being all that special on his own. I'm not saying he's not strong, but what I am saying is that his strength is not why people fear him. So I know that I said that pure power wasn't enough to make it on this list, but our number 4 has a reason for this exception. Netero's Bodhisattva on the surface is the pinnacle of offensive abilities. However, there is a devastating downside to it, as unless the user is fast or dedicated enough to actually make use of the attack patterns, it is nearly worthless. Okay, worthless might not be the right word here for a giant Buddha who has insane power behind its attacks, but it is definitely less useful than compared to when Netero uses it. Netero's Nen on its own is fantastic, but it's the way that he's able to master such a complex ability that really allows him to be so high on this list. Years and years of practice and dedication went into attaining this, and to me, that counts. It was only because of Netero's speed that he was able to make use of the Bodhisattva, and I think that this is what this list is all about. Number 3 this time goes to Morel and his Deep Purple. When you think of smoke abilities in anime, you might jump to characters like Smoker from One Piece. Maybe turning into smoke, intangibility, or even creating smoke. But Morel takes this use of smoke and completely shifts the dynamic. He has the basic making smoke thing, but he can also shape it into anything that he wants, make them seem living, or even create up to 200 dolls to fight for him. He can shift their color to make them camouflage or to make them look real. The versatility of this ability is unheard of. It basically allows him to create literally whatever he wants, and on top of this, his smoke clouds and creations can be made nearly indestructible if he wants them to be, which leads to him being able to even lock him and his opponent in smoky jail, which is next to unescapable. The use of smoke in such diverse and creative ways is well beyond what's expected of most characters in the series. Even in a system as unique as Nen, not all Nen abilities are created equal, and Morel shows us that the same can be said for Nen users. Runner-up is Kurapika, whose entire skill set revolves around hunting down the Phantom Troop. His dowsing chain can lead him to objects or people, chain jail snares spiders and shuts off their Nen, Holy Chain can heal himself, Judgment Chain wraps around the target's heart and forces them to follow an order or instantly be killed, Steel Chain will steal Nen abilities, and all of these can be supplemented by Emperor Time. Basically, Kurapika limited himself to more or less only being able to use these skills on the troop, and as such he developed an arsenal which makes full use of his abilities, and then even goes beyond them, all to perfectly enable him to hunt down the Phantom Troop. This is the kind of deal that Gon should have been looking for, rather than giving up his Nen and going into a coma. Karapika makes full use of the limitation system that Nen has in place to gain the biggest buff possible, all to deal with the troop, which is all he really cares about. It's the perfect example of how to use Nen to reach your goals, however I don't think that even this compares to our number one, Hisoka. Hisoka is famous for having one of the most simple abilities in the series, however, purely based on his own creativity, it became one of the most useful in the series as well. As I explained in the previous video, Bungie Gum, which holds the power of both rubber and gum, can bounce back projectiles, sling objects, act as a bungee to draw enemies or repel himself, glue himself to the ground to gain leverage, pull back weapons that he has thrown, stop his own bleeding, temporarily reattach missing limbs, 
bring himself back to life by resuscitating his heart and lungs, launch himself forward, and so much more. And that doesn't even bring into account Texture Surprise, which we saw him using to fool Castro into thinking he didn't lose an arm, to fool the Phantom Troop into thinking that he was a member, and to alter his prophecy from Prolo, and so many more things throughout the series. The pure variety and ingenuity of Hisoka throughout the entire series made him an easy number one for me in this video. And there you have it, my opinion on what the 20 best Nen users throughout Hunter x Hunter are. Obviously this is a pretty subjective list, but if you think that there are some characters who should have been higher or lower, or others who just should have made the list in general, be sure to let me know down in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this Hunter x Hunter video and want to see more, please leave a like, and if you're new to Anime Upper, remember to subscribe and ring that bell. By selecting all notifications, you can help guarantee that you will not miss any future videos. And of course, you can follow Anime Uproar at Anime Uproar on Twitter and Instagram, or you can follow myself at ExcellionYT. I want to give a big thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon who allow videos like this to be possible, especially the patron of Legend, the one who is acknowledged by Lord Twigo himself, Alpha Sigma. As well, our the one-tier patrons, the ones who stand above all clans, Ingrata, Patehefa, Algetal, Hinokami and Water, The Toasted Chi, The Spike 8227, Cory McGowan, Dylan Isidore, Spidey Life Tanel, Tungsten Tarkus, Baked Buddhist, Cody Hebert, and Monkey D. Quilly. Finally, our pro hero tier patrons Gilgamesh, The Red Haired Raven, Anel Cruz, Rathwin De Ora, Very Gucci, Alicia Octor, Bonnie Parks, Joanne Garcia, Ted No Ted, Fat Boy Games, and Soul Rise Slice and Dice. If you enjoy our work, or maybe think we just offer a little bit of extra enjoyment in your day-to-day -day life, please consider going to patreon.com slash anime uproar and supporting the channel. For as little as one dollar, you will get your name featured in future videos, as well as have access to our exclusive patron-only Discord. You can also join the YouTube channel by clicking that blue join button next to the subscribe option, but whichever way you support us, you will get these same great benefits. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, stay excellent.